Like many popular icons and shows, Spongebob has had lots of games in the past, but unfortunately for fans we haven't really gotten a decent one in a long time, which probably has a lot to do with why there are lots and lots of Spongebob fan games out there, and fan creations. Let's check out a few. The first is an unfinished game which is a fan's attempt at making a HD Battle for Bikini Bottom remake. I got the opportunity in late 2016 to talk a bit to the creator, at that time he'd been working on it for well over a year, but I'm unsure if he has continued to work on the game. Considering THQ Nordic will probably be releasing an official HD Battle for Bikini Bottom in the near future, it's kind of made this game pretty unnecessary, but it's still definitely worth having a look at. And to be completely honest, it's actually surprisingly good. I wasn't expecting anywhere near this much of the game to be done. I was mostly just expecting Spongebob's house or something like that. It crashed a few times during the game, but um, after that I didn't have many issues. It's super rough and super early in development, but I really hope Jacob keeps going with it and creates something awesome. Its main flaws at the moment is the camera and the weird jumping mechanics. At the moment I'll guess the jumping was my fault because I wasn't using a controller, I was using a keyboard. It just felt strange. The camera is just frustrating because the Battle for Bikini Bottom camera had a level of physicality to it which this one doesn't. So this one goes through walls, so every time you are close to something you can't see Spongebob. But apart from that, it's pretty good for the amount of progress done on it. The next game I played was just called Spongebob is the Best. How many shrimps do you have to eat before you make your skin turn pink? Eat too much and you'll get sick. Shrimps are pretty rich. Yeah. Um, what a... what... What? Um, I don't know what's going on. What? Hold on, we can't just move on with explaining why this song. Why not, I don't know, use the millions of SpongeBob songs at your fingertips? Why this? This entire game is so weird. The sound effects. Beautiful sky, beautiful plants, I plants. Spongebob, you're the best! Spongebob, you gotta help me! Spongebob! Oh, a Krabby Patty! Plankton must be behind this! A Krabby Patty! A Krabby Patty! A Krabby Patty! A Krabby Patty! Pick, pick. Pick. This is beautiful. This game was either made by a five year old or a meme genius, alright? And just like that, I'm done. That was a solid five second game. Yep, moving on. Alright, next was a SpongeBob turn based RPG. What? Why did none of these games make any sense? I can't do anything except fight jellyfish. How, how do I get the items to move further in the game? All I can do is grind. Mm. And then you work out, you can just spam the enter button and win any fight. Also because of how dumb this game is, Zero is the only way to leave the store and Windows. Why Zero? I quit this game three times because I couldn't get out of an option where I had selected to use my special move rather than attack and there wasn't anything there and I couldn't work out how to go backwards so I had to exit the game three times because it didn't occur to me that they would make zero exit rather than oh, I don't know backspace shift control space why zero <laughs> Well, I can't figure out what to do. You can tell this is a meme game by the different images for each person. Alright, I got Plankton up somehow to join my party. Now it's even easier to kill the jellyfish, which still doesn't do anything for me. It's so hard with these games to understand if the reason you can't do something is because it isn't complete or it's just not explained well, which is really frustrating. Okay, moving on. Um, 
You can't talk about Sponge or fan games without bringing up the overwhelming amount of Five Nights at Freddy's ripoff games. I don't know why there are so many of them, but there are. I don't know if it's because of the success of games like 6am at the Chum Bucket, because of YouTubers like Jack Jacksepticeye, but there is a plethora of options. I don't really want to talk about the ones that have already been covered extensively on YouTube, but I did do a gameplay video of 3am at Floater Cemetery a few months back, which you can check out in the end screen. But now let's talk about SpongeBob's Day of Terror. This game is not scary. <laughs> not at all. It attempts and fails at the FNAF format. For once, it doesn't have obnoxious jump scares at the end of each game, which I do prefer because I don't really find those scary, they're just dumb. You find yourself at rock bottom, and you need to collect enough randomly spawning items to get enough money to buy a ticket to escape. Now, when I said it wasn't scary, this is what I meant. The fact that this game has no scary aspect at all <laughs> is proven by the fact that I beat it three times before I even saw what was meant to be killing me. Three times for him to actually catch me. Three times! For him to actually catch me, I had to wait until he started to like appear. And then I had to walk towards him. There was even an occasion where I saw him coming towards me. And then he just disappeared. It's... It, mm. <laughs> Floater Cemetery is a bit better. It actually has some nice atmosphere, and I found it to be pretty cool. The best thing about it is the uh, the reflections. Mmm, damn, look at those reflections. But all its atmosphere is instantly ruined when you hear the Flying Dutchman doing this. Ow! There are several games in the AM At series of SpongeBob fan games. And to be completely fair, despite my dislike for the FNAF format, they are the most polished, funnest, and best fan games for Spongebob out there. The rest have very questionable quality, based off the ones I've tried out. There are also a ton of Spongebob themed mods out there. Hello, 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 it's me editing Chester. Um, so I couldn't get any of these things to work on my computer, so this is all footage from different YouTubers. Their links will be down in the description below if you want to find them. So anyway, there are so many mods out there. Some from Simpsons Hit and Run. I never realized everything I desired could possibly be one singular moment of time. This is what one would call perfection. Also, can I just mention this mod for Simpsons Hit and Run? It is so cool. Like, you can buy all the different items, the different character designs, the different car designs. It is so cool. The different logos and everything like that is an awesome mod from what I've now find about it. If I can get it to work, I'm definitely going to do some videos about it. You can also run over people and they'll they'll shout stuff. Now what was I doing? Ten out ten. Confirm for smash. I was honestly really blown away with this mod. I was expecting them all to be pretty low standard, but this was this was really good. There are a million for Minecraft, GTA, and also any fighting game you can imagine. Look at him. Look at that fighting stance. This is what we in the industry call outstanding. Get him. Get him. Get, get him. Get him. Hit him with your super move, Patrick. You're like eight times his size. I have no idea what's up with all the Minecraft mods. Like, there are so many. It's quite concerning. There's something incredibly funny to me about seeing any of these historic characters either driving, fighting, um, yeah mostly just driving and fighting. I was trying to find mods for specific Spongebob games but I was having some difficulty doing that so I decided to leave that for a later video. So yeah, those were some Spongebob fan games. Let me know if there are any others you would like me to talk about in the future. Anyway, thank you for watching, bye bye. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>